And I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to show you now why. You, you preach what you want to, but this, this is where I am until to Creflo see Jesus. But I, here's why. Verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, <laughs> preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let them, let him be accursed. He says, if, he says, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel except this gospel of grace, let him be accursed. Then he goes to verse 9 and he says, as we before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. He said it twice. He said it twice. How, how are you going to just, you're going to ignore this scripture? He said it twice. You know what it means to be cursed? It means empowered to fail. It means that you're, you're, you're hemmed up on all sides. And that may explain why we've not seen the book of Acts manifestation because of what we've been preaching. You're hemmed up on all sides. Things are not working. You know, so many people said, you know, you better be, you better be cautious about preaching this gospel. You know, you're going to lose your whole church and people are going to quit coming and people are going to stop giving and, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not hemmed up no more. I'm not hemmed up no more, praise God. Look at what Paul said about this in um, uh, uh, Acts 20. Flip over there for a moment, Acts 20. And then I'm going off the radar just a little bit. But here's the attitude you have to have. And I'm not just talking about me preaching. I'm talking about you preaching. it. I'm preaching it to you so you can go you into all the world and preach it to everybody else. Don't look at me like I'm the only preacher when I say preach it. You, you preach it too. You preach it. Preach it. Turn to your neighbor and say, hello, preacher. The Bible called you with a great commission. He said, go ye into all the world and what? Preach the gospel. Ah. Go into all the world and what? preach the gospel. He said he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation, that every one of us have the message and we have the, we have the calling to go into the world and tell them it's all right to come home now. God's not mad at you no more. It's all right for you to come home right now. He's not holding your sin against you. I know you didn't did some messed up stuff, but the blood of Jesus has cleansed you and God has forgiven you. You can come on home right now. You ain't got the work to try to get back into his graces. He's invited you back into his divine favor Go to the world. Tell everybody on the corner. Tell that drug addict out there who's selling drugs. Tell that guy over there who's committing adultery. Hey, come on home. Yeah, I know it was messed up, but Jesus has fixed it up, and he's ready to take your mess and turn it into a masterpiece. Come on home. That's what we go to preach, and people in the world are ready to hear that message preached. So go tell somebody, call up an unsaved relatives you ain't spoke to in the last two years and tell them, I got good news for you. Know you've been divorced five times. You're probably getting ready to get the sixth divorce. But come on home. Jesus has a gift he wants to give you. And I tell you, when you get this grace, you'll finally be able to stay married. Come on home. He's fixed it all together. Come on to healing. I know the doctor said you're going to die, but Jesus said by his stripes you're healed. He suffered so you don't have to suffer. Come on back home. Come on home. The world's waiting to hear that preached. Because the whole world's thinking, well, I got to qualify. They even think they have to qualify to go to church. You invite a sinner to church, they say, they'll say, I ain't got nothing to wear. Well, how am I supposed to act? Well, I don't know if I should go there. You know, I, you know, I ain't no good, so I don't know why I need to go there. They need to hear the real message of the genuine gospel. The reason why you need to go there is because through Jesus Christ, he's paid the debt for all of your sins. He suffered. God ain't mad at you. God ain't rejecting you. God is ready to, to, to do whatever needs to be done in your life so you can have it to, to the full until it overflows. Come on home, baby. Come on home. Hallelujah. Yeah, you don't understand. I had two abortions. That's all right. Come on home. God will take care of your two kids, forgive you of your sins, and then when you get to heaven, you'll be able to finish raising your children. He is so full of love, and, and, he, <laughs> and he's taking away every excuse for you to stay out there and give your life to Satan. He's taking away every excuse. There ain't nothing you did. You ain't never been so bad enough that it's stronger than his blood to forgive you and to restore you back into his grace. Oh, I hope this grace don't turn me into a crybaby. 
but when I think about his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think about his goodness, Oh, God, help me finish this message. <laughs> help me, Jesus. Help me finish this message, Lord. Help me finish this message. And I just, I just want to tell the whole world about this grace. But you say you got cured from cancer. You did too? two or three just shouted out, he cured me from cancer. Somebody shout, great grace. So it's, it's begun. Because God's not mad at you. He suffered on that cross so you don't have to suffer from cancer. And as soon as you receive the finished work of healing, God will come in and do something that the doctors say can't be done. Somebody shout great grace, great power. Turn in your neighbor and wake him up. Don't come in here and sleep on me. I'm trying to help you get your life together. Wake yourself up. You may freely be alert. I'm up here trying to help you. You probably broke, busted, disgusted, sick, pitiful, depressed, and I'm trying to help you out of all of that, and you sleeping on the answer. If I told you I'm going to give you a, 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 a uh, uh, combination for a billion dollars, I don't care how sleepy you are. You will pinch yourself for an hour until you got every last number. What I'm, that's what I'm trying to give you right now. So go to pinching yourself. So, okay. does everybody understand that now? So, we see here in the garden, they had to be obedient to not eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil in order for the blessings to keep flowing. In the dispensation of the law, they had to be obedient to keeping what? All the law. Turn and wake your neighbor up. I got to help y'all. See, you can't, you can't do no better until you know better. I got, I got to help y'all. Amen. Hear somebody say, well, if you want to keep something from a black man, put it in a book. <laughs> Praise God, that's changed. And now we have to say, if you want to keep something from a Christian, put it in the Bible. And let somebody try to teach you. You got to learn. You got to understand it. So I don't get up here and just shout, you know, ha, the blessing in the garden. <laughs> oh, Lord, you got to keep what he told you about the tree. <laughs> yeah. And then we go uh, to the Mose law. I say, mo, mo, mose. <laughs> Oh, Lord. And if you keep all the commandments, uh, one, two, three, four, five, mm, five more, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten commandments, ten, 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 that come after nine, ten, oh, ten, ten, 
10, 10. Anybody got time for that? You can't do nothing with that. <laughs> so I have to settle down. I got to teach it. I got to sow it in you like a farmer sows it in the ground so it can come up. Because <laughs> some of y'all seen it like, I don't know where you are. <laughs> God, Mosaic, Law, Moesha, I don't know what he said, man. <laughs> well, you got to start knowing. Because my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And we got to renew our mind with the genuine gospel of grace. Okay? You know what it means when God says, I'll be your God? You know what it means when he says, I'll be your God? It means this. If you are sick, I'll heal you. I'll be your God. If you are broke, I'll supply for you. I'll be your God. If you're in trouble, I'll turn it around. I'll be your God. If you're depressed, I'll give you joy. I'll be your God. When God says, I'll be your God, you don't have to try to work it out. He said, I'll be your God. Woo, glory. I'll be your God. You remember the story about the publican and the Pharisee? The Pharisee was bragging about, oh, I pray all the time, and I fast all the time, and I get my tithes all the time. And then the publican looked up and said this, have mercy on me. And Jesus said that publican will get in heaven before that Pharisee. Why? Because God's not rewarding you because you're good, because he's already good. He, he, he's rewarding you because you believe that your sins are forgiven and your iniquities are forgotten about. He, you believe in God and that he, that he loves you so much that he paid the debt for your sin. When you do that, you honor God by honoring his son. You believe that he's taking your sins away, that he didn't waste his blood when he shed his blood for your sins to be forgiven and your iniquities to be wiped out. And so he can be your God and you believe it. And the devil's trying to get you where you don't believe it. So you got to understand, once you realize you're the righteousness of God, you're going to want to do right. You're going to pray more. You're going to do right things more. You're going to do all the right things. You, listen, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. When you are faithful, when you are faithful to the gospel, when you are obedient to the faith and when you continue to believe that your sins have been forgiven and, and iniquities have been done, God will take away that bad desire and put a new one in your heart. Amen. Did y'all hear what I just said? If you'll believe that he has taken care of all of your sins, he will change your desire. You'll wake up one morning and you're like, man, I don't know why I ain't had a taste for weed in a month. You'll wake up and say, you know, for some reason, you know, I, 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 know, I, I know last week I was a big old hoe, but now I just, <laughs> now I don't want to be a hoe no more. <laughs> God will take that from it. You got to trust that God can do it. Jesus can do it. Hallelujah. You put too much, you push, you, you stake too much on your own ability. God knows how to do it. He knows how to turn the heart of the king the way you want it to go. You just believe what he told you to believe. Now, I probably could have used a better choice of words. But I am mindful but that my sins have been forgiven and my iniquities he remembers no more and I'm not going to condemn myself because I couldn't get the right words. Jesus didn't come just to save people in church. He came to save the whole world. What he made available to us that we now have, he made it available to everybody. I'm so amazed. I'm just so amazed. It's just something in my comprehension. I'm like, who does this? How great is this God? Who, look at what he did. It's almost like, dude, you got to be like 
something wrong with you if you can't get to heaven. There is no need for you to walk out of here and not have Jesus in your life. All you got to do is come to the table. Everything's been prepared. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you for whatever you did. He's not mad at you for what you did two years ago or two days ago. He has forgiven you and purged you of your sins. Now it's time for you to say it is finished. Jesus has already said it is finished. It is time for you to say it is finished. And wherever you may be today, and whatever position you may be in, and wherever your life may be in today, ladies and gentlemen, I pray that you can agree with me today that we all need a Savior. We need a Savior. This business of trying to be, you know, born again without Jesus and trying to be a Christian without Jesus, we all need a Savior. You can't do it by yourself. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. We need a Savior. And we have that Savior. And he has saved his people from their sins. So there's no need for you to, to go back out and blame yourself and beat yourself up and Oh, dear God, this and dear God, that. There's no need for that anymore. You can let that go by believing what Jesus has done for you. And this altar is available for you today. Come. Be blessed today. Give your life to Jesus today. Stop the struggle. Stop the condemnation. Stop the guilt. And come to Jesus. That's the true gospel. Come to Jesus and trust him to do what you've been trying to do for years. Oh, man, we went to church this morning. I felt like I was in school, man. Oh, man, what happened to the organ, man? 